Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me on my exploration of the wide world of pens. And here's one of them. You may recognize it from an earlier video that I did on some pens I got on AliExpress. And we're going to dive in and look at this pen in detail. And you may say it's on a turntable. And yes, it is turntable worthy. And I also wanted to use the Purple Crab because he hasn't had his video exposure like some of his fellow crabs have had. And he said he's strong enough to hold up this heavy pen. And hopefully as the light plays upon the matte black finish and the matte silvery clip, you also kind of get an idea of what the pen looks like. So Mr. Crab is going to give us a wink and we're going to dive into this pen. So I was uh, waiting to do a video on this pen because I was waiting for some black nibs and they came in a recent AliExpress order. And I like that Made in China which now seems to be appearing all over the place. I got a number of these number five nibs. I just thought they would be good. I like the design on them. Yeah, we'll see how they write. So these are the black nibs that I got, and they're very nice. Here's your fine one. And here's your Fude one. I mean, that's pretty much a full Fude. It's a pretty uh, steep angle there, which is one of the definitions of a good Fude. And these also have some nice engravings on them. Too bad I'm not going to be able to put one of these into my black brass pocket pen. I was so hoping. Here we have the pen partially disassembled. Didn't take the converter apart. I'm not going to do that. At least not right now. I would like to get rid of that spring, but I'll live with it for the time being. This is really the focus of having the pen apart. Interesting feed. I enjoy that flat section with no fins and there are some comb fins here uh, against the nib which is where they might actually do some functional purpose. But if we turn it around and we look inside here, I need to get the LED. We'll see a wad of glue there that's holding that nib assembly permanently in the section. So, much to my displeasure, I cannot unscrew the nib assembly. I cannot pull out the nib and feed. I've used as much force as I'm comfortable. I'm not ready to break the pen. So I have an ink that I think that'll work well in there, but this confirms one of those thoughts that we had why we can't disassemble some pans is because they've been glued together. I think this matte finish is worthy of LED light. They did an excellent job with it. Very consistent finish. And I love that matte clip. Kudos on the aesthetics of the pen. I'm going to bring the LED in and look inside that cap. Just a machine ledge in there. It's a solid brass cap. Some of them have uh, plastic insert in there for the threads, but my eyes don't see that as being plastic. If we look at this silver model, we'll see a similar type of design. They seem to be very consistent. And I've not had any problems with this design uh, of the nib drying out. That cap seals very well. Lots of threads there. Very fine threads. So, you know, uh, you can leave it for a few weeks and uncap it and it will write fine. So one may ask, how many of these Caveco inspired pocket pens do I have? And the answer to that question is nine. Here's the black one which has a very distinctive clip, which makes it unique among all of the rest of these pens. 
Here's this uh, heavily chrome plated one, which was the first real inexpensive one under five US dollars. Here's that beautiful, subtle brown tortoise resin pen, which came and went very, very quickly. The like started with uh, the brass models. Here's a different version of it from a different manufacturer, which has six since 1985 on it. They came with this coating on it, which gave it kind of an antique look. And it had worn piece printed on one of the facets on the cap. So I took it upon myself to spend many hours and many days removing this coating and removing worn piece. And this is the pen I came up with in which is just plain brass and it's held up very well. The blue one and the red one also came out and went, I think, relatively quickly. And these colors are also uh, very reminiscent of Pen BBS and Namisu. You know, the red anodized, the blue anodized uh, coatings. Here's a blue cracked ice, which I got when I first saw it because I fell in love with it. So this pen has gone through a number of iterations, different materials, and I think it's an incredibly well-designed pocket pen. It takes a full-size converter or cartridge. It posts very well, and it's extremely durable. The design is excellent. And this is a good example of, of someone taking a, an existing design, making a little bit longer, making some modifications to it, but still maintaining the look and the functionality of the original design. That's common in any manufacturing process, especially in the retail business. So I know some viewers get upset about copying and duplicating and cloning and it's uh, not something that I have any emotional involvement in whatsoever. It's a pen. Do I like the pen or not like the pen? It's the important question that I always ask myself. Does the pen work? Does the pen do what it's intended to do? Trying to figure out what it's intended to do might be a challenge in its own regard. So let's take a look at these and let me see if they makes any sense to show them in this orientation. You know, the, the whole thing with photography is figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And there we are with a little bit of a close up look at these pens and you don't have that distortion of the wide angle lens that you're going to get from front to back, but it is kind of front to back in this direction. So I'm very happy to have all of these pens. Uh, all of them have been inked up at various times and used uh, daily. And they've all worked exceptionally well. And the other thing that I think this design and the way it's incorporated in these pens is the nibs don't dry out. You uncap it. It writes first time every time, which to me is extremely important with a pocket pen. I've never had any of these burp ink. And I think part of that has to do with this metal has a high heat capacity to it. So it's not going to warm up quickly like uh, a plastic pen would. And I think also for some reason the design of the feed precludes burping. And that's really good when you got a pocket pen, which could be in your pocket and be a little bit warmer than it should be. So what ink to put into this black pen? Well, this ink called out to me. It's Noodler's uh, Black Eel. Interesting label is they always have on these inks. Look at the color card. It's pretty black. But there is a kind of a dark gray component to it. If we look at the chromatography, we'll see some interesting colors. There's definitely a permanent line here at the bottom. And as you push up, you get a whole bunch of different colors including some blues but then at the very top you get another very intense black color but is it waterproof and permanent and here is the chromatography done where I let this dry for a day and it's permanent some of that pigment did push up 
But, you know, comparing these two chromatographies, there's no question about it. It's a permanent ink. So one of the challenges with pocket pens is ergonomics. So as we unscrew this cap, it takes about two turns, which is about my maximum. And uncapped, it's a little short, but it's certainly usable for quick note taking. Those pocket pens that are designed in the Wong Kai uh, Mini or Moon Man one, where it's a a lot thicker diameter, but you need to post it to write with it. And all of these designs post very deeply and very securely and make for a, a nice length. It does add to the weight. None of these pens are light. The section's about as small as I can tolerate. And we'll give you the dimensions of that section. It's also short, so you're kind of stuck in one spot. So hopefully you enjoy that. The threads are not sharp at all, so you can hold this anywhere you want. And it's uh, good to write with. But this weight, to me, kind of precludes writing for hours. I mean, for short writing sessions, a couple pages, the pen will work fine. No pun intended, but this fine nib writes fine. In fact, it actually writes good. I mean, I'm not a fine nib guy, but I could live with this nib without any issues. So Noodler's... Uh, Black Eel is a lubricated ink and it flows very well and I've used it in a number of pens and it's a good ink if you want to have a pen write fairly wet and this one writes fairly wet. But what's really good is this nib just feels great on the paper. Many viewers have commented on they'll buy a pen and the nib will be scratchy, it'll not write well, it'll be inconsistent. But I'm showing you exactly how this pen writes. I didn't do anything to the nib. I did flush it thoroughly and the flow was good when I was flushing it. So I had uh, expectations that it would be a good writer. But that's it. And in my experience... Maybe one out of ten nibs that I get from uh, my multiple Chinese pen makers do I have issues with. And that, I think, is an excellent 90% good ratio. There's a number of, of very high-end pen manufacturers who don't have that good of a reputation. And they're not mass-produced uh, like these are, and they're not low-cost like these are. So it's hard for me to understand how people get upset with buying a very inexpensive pen for a few dollars and then getting upset that it doesn't write like a beautiful, expensive pen. Or at least they think like a beautiful, expensive pen should write. My editorial comments of the day. So we're going to rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.3. One check for the look. I mean, they, they knocked it out of the ballpark on this one with that matte clip. And this is not slippery at all. It feels good in the hand. I like it. And, you know, there's a lot of things I don't like. Fine nibs and small sections. But I can live with it on this pen. It also gets two checks for the nib. Because this writes as well as any fine nib I've ever written with. And I've written with more than one. So that's how we get to the 9.3. And it's also very well made. Considering this thing is dirt cheap, that's a phenomenal endorsement from my viewpoint. 
So if you like a pen like this, uh, find one, buy it. You know, you notice it's not posted, and I have no trouble writing with it not posted. But with over the camera on the tripod, it'll hit the tripod if I post it. So thank you for watching. This was the first of three pens that I got in a collection, and I will continue to do reviews of the rest of the pens. I've been waiting for some things to come in. Obviously the black nib for this one, but that didn't work out. So find pens that you like to write with, find inks that you like, find paper that you like. Find something that encourages you to put marks on paper. They could be doodles, they could be drawings, they could be incredibly good prose or poetry. You know, write a few sentence, sentences, uh, write a letter, write a novel, write a series, whatever you like. You know, just enjoy putting ink on paper. So we've reached the end of this video. And there'll be more to come. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy. Enjoy your pens. And we're going to say bye for now. Uh, this ink just worked great in this pen. I found a new everyday carry.